What screams I peaked in high school? Getting the score of the football game you won against the school's rival tattooed on your shoulder. When I was in high school, this guy a year before me had a fearsome reputation. At house parties, people would fear him just by name alone. He would show up to parties with his cronies and start fights. He came from a decent enough family. Everybody wanted to be on his good side. Anyway, he graduates high school, and most of us were still in 12th grade. I remember he used to come around lunk time to smoke with the people out front, shoot the breeze, and talk about how much fun it is to just sleep in, and do nothing, and have all this freedom. A couple of months of our cool. 2. Why are you still here? As we awkwardly shuffled back to class. Sheet. I knew a guy who dropped out as a senior when I was a freshman, and throughout my entire high school career he was the dude who would show up to house parties and beat the sheet out of people. Everyone knew who he was and was scared of him. I also recall seeing him brawl with dudes in the Taco Bell parking lot during lunch when he was, I dunno, 20. Many years later he resurfaced on Facebook with a face tattoo and a lot of posting about Jesus. He messaged one of my buddies out of the blue one day and apologized for punching him in the face like a decade earlier. Some of the popular girls from high school still get together very frequently and you see updates of it on Facebook. I also keep in touch with some friends from high school and I think that that's nice. However, one of those friends of mine once ran into them during one of their get together. He said hi and happened to be sitting not too far from them at the bar. He said that all they did for the whole night was talk about high school. They looked up old classmates on Facebook, laughed at them, called them names, looked at their spouses, and called them names too. They still thought themselves the popular kids, as if they still had some sort of influence on all these people. Everyone has moved on, done interesting things in their life except for them. They are just rehashing old drama and old rumors. One of those girls had a small bit of success as a photographer in high school. She won a couple contests that were aimed at teenagers and her photos aren't bad. Her parents turned this into a very big deal. Her friends all wanted to be in her photos, and she was dead set on going to art school and getting the recognition she deserved. I don't know if she never made it into art school or if she dropped out, but she definitely did not become a photographer. Instead, you see her launching some new startup business selling asinine live laugh love sheet about once a year. I dated a guy with his high school mascot tattooed on his arm. It was such a turn off. A guy who graduated from my high school back in 2003 was arrested a few years ago for his second DUI. He was wearing his letterman jacket in his mugshot. Partying with high schoolers when you're 30. At my 10 year reunion. The prom queen came wearing a tiara with a custom queen 03 sash over her shoulder. I had to go outside I was laughing so hard. But I'll be damned if she didn't rock that outfit the wild time. So, respect. Still sad though. We used to play indoor floor hockey in a loft room in the big gym of my middle school. One game I scored 3 goals, one of them being a bank shot off the wall. The next year I wrote about the game for an assignment in English class and the teacher read it to the class the next day. I'm not sure which one was my peak. Billy Joel feels compelled to write a ballad about how you and your ex were the king and the queen of the prom. How the two of you married right after high school and how it all went to hell from there. Bonus points if your names happen to be Brenda and Eddie. Still bullying the nerds at your 10 year reunion. Or worse, in real life. I briefly worked with a guy I went to high school with, and like 90% of our not work related conversations were him reminiscing about how much he'd bullied me in high school, and acting like it was all a big joke. Dropping out of college to promote your pyramid scheme. As someone who recently graduated, the students who returned to the school every time they came home from school, just so people would pay attention to them. Also not sure how to explain it, but the people who now posts blank screens and just text on their snapchat stories, that just say things like always crazy to see who you can really trust when this happens, or surprising to see who really cares about you, when you need friends the most, like I said I don't know how to explain it, but there's definitely a correlation. Sharing every memory from Facebook talking about the good old days, and wish we could go back, when it's only been a few years since graduation. 
filming yourself running drills and throwing footballs off camera in front of your van mobile home. <laughs> Me, in a horrid realization, in the back of my 92 Camaro, while icing that knee I blew out at the championship game senior year, reading through the divorce papers. There's still time to open a gym. You'll have to sleep there for a while on account of the divorce. Become the overweight bald owner who still benches a disturbing amount of weight when he's not injured. Yelling encouragement at your regular lifters is a partial substitute for having friends and a family. <laughs> Selling pot to teenagers and then trying to get them to stay and smoke with you. I mean, I met someone who's going to be one of my groomsmen like this. Sold the kid weed, and he seemed pretty cool, so we ended up smoking and playing fighting games for most of the afternoon. Still one of my best friends, almost a decade later. Still bragging about high school basketball games from 10 years ago. The class that graduated before me had their 10 year reunion last year and apparently a big fight broke out over something that happened when they were all still in high school. I guess that is one way to tell if someone peaked in high school. Pretty embarrassing. Always showing up to the football field wearing your letterman jacket, years after you barely passed summer school in order to graduate. When I was in high school, the cool kids partied hard. They'd get blackout drunk and used whatever illegal substances they can get. I was looking through the profiles of some of those classmates and a few of them are still doing the same sheet. Talking gangster sheet despite growing up in a middle class suburb. Talking about how they miss their kids who are in CPS custody because they went to jail for using. Going on rants about Knox, etc. They're about 27 or 28. What made you cool in high school makes you a loser as a grown as adult, especially when you're a parent. Teachers who suck up to the athletes and other popular kids, and ignore the less popular kids. My freshman year Spanish teacher was like that. I went to school with a girl whose parents graduated from our high school 20 years prior. All four members of their family got the school's logo tattooed. Her boyfriend still goes to the football games and reposts his game highlights on Instagram. We're all 21 to 22. I'm from New Mexico and live in the largest city in the state. We've never had a good HS football team and the BF usually goes to pick up underage girls and brags to everyone about how he was the star football player. If someone from another team makes a really good play he'll make some kind of remark about how he cold done it better or he'll go into a detail about his JV football experience. 1. Still wearing your letterman jacket in class ring in your 30s too. Talking about high school sports games from a different decade, as if they meant something. 3. Still living in your hometown, and looking forward to that night at the bar just before Thanksgiving when everyone who left comes home. So you can talk about high school stuff to people, who have grown up, and have real lives now. A guy gravity 2 years before me, in 2006. He got a job as a school narc my senior year. Basically a job that is somewhere below security and barely a step above student. We had our 10 year reunion last year in the school gymnasium and there he was with his sunglasses on at 8pm sporting a sweet flavor saver and dicky shorts with his black socks pulled up to his knees. As was the fashion for all the brothers at my high school when we attended. He was making his rounds trying to enforce every single rule that was imposed on students. Meanwhile, we are all 27 to 29 years old, and nobody is taking his sheet. Eventually someone told him, you were a ducking tool in high school, and nothing has changed. Get lost, narc. He then started listing every girl he boned in high school. It was hard watching, that guy spiral so hard, while everyone was laughing at him. Edit, a flavor saver, is a nickname we give for the patch of hair that grows directly under your bottom lip. It's a flavor saver, because when you go down on a woman, the juice gets in there, and you can taste it later. It's just a joke we'd say cause it was very popular amongst the bro crowd in high school. Basically a guy who tries really hard to be a hardass, because they couldn't grow beards or mustaches, but could attain one of those. Not letting go of old memories, where you work you be on the football team, doing senior pranks, cheating on the freshmen, on and on and on and just never shutting up about it. High school? I peaked in elementary school, and it was downhill from there. Edit, thanks to everyone for relating.
I have a friend. We'll call him Dave. That isn't his name, because his family is Iranian, but we'll call him Dave. I also went to school with another person who I'll call Dickhead, because he's a dickhead. He refused to be called by his actual name anyway, and insisted on being called by his nickname, which for the purposes of this tale we shall call Massive Wanker. Dave applied for a job and got it. It was a pretty serious gig, a finance job that paid extremely well. He got it, and arrived for his first day. The guy who hired him showed him around the building, then showed him to his desk, and introduced him to his immediate manager. It was Dickhead. This was literally about 15 years after we'd left school, and everyone who wasn't a fellow Dickhead thought Dickhead was far in the past. Nope. Dave said, oh hi Dickhead. Dickhead replied up. Oh, it's actually massive wanker, if you don't mind. Dave said what? Still? He then went down to the lobby and paced around for 10 minutes and then just walked out. Nobody wants Dickhead to be their boss. Dave now works elsewhere and seems happy. Dickhead however? No idea. Don't care. Why? Because he's a proper ducking dickhead. A football coach at my high school held a record as a linebacker for when he was in high school in the 80s. One kid a few years ago on the first string varsity team came 30 yards away from breaking that record, and the coach promptly took him out of the game and kept him out for the rest of the season. Only one game left at that point. So no one could break his record from 30 years ago. One of the few good things, maybe the only good thing, about the UK's usually ducked education system is that hardly anyone, except those who have had an expensive private education, gives a duck about their old school. No loyalty to the old school. Sports loyalty when at school was practically non-existent. No one, apart from those on the teams, usually gave a sheet about how the sports teams did. No yearbooks. No jackets. No proms. At least when I went to school, that aberration seems to be creeping in now. No one gives a duck. School reunions are rare, if a thing at all here. I still know and see a few of my classmates or ones who were at school when I was there, but only because they still live locally, and it's not that big a place. The others I have no idea where they are, how they are, even if they are still alive, and with maybe two or three exceptions, have no great wishy to find out.